Oh, sorry. Ya, ya, Sakachane, you do sagan ya Russia. Yeah. Oh, 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 o
Chane. Do get a ye aya, do te ye aya, ya schoon ika ya teenin. Rebecca and Twaka Sakui eat whole height. Kashikwaach. Shashkwan. Aya Kudas to a wound. Yashakachani. At at Ayaka shant ude yak dag bitch tle. Ah, aya ya laka chane du shat. I think that her mic just isn't working. Ah, the squashy it. Oh, okay. Ah, test test show to a ah. I was getting little bits of it earlier, but I don't hear anything now. And so, if if it's okay, we'll. A day cut now, but yeah, we don't hear it. So keep keep trying, and then we'll we'll just keep coming back to you, and then and it's no problem, no problem. We're just gonna change chaos. Yeah, sometimes technology just doesn't want to go. So. Okay, go ahead, Juan. But um, or maybe we'll give you a when it comes to your turn, Rebecca. We'll just pause and we'll watch you read it. And then Shash Kwan will read it again. We'll just do it twice. So that way you can be part of the gang. Okay. Go. Okay. Saka Chane U A Ya Kate Aya Aya U Kate. I get to Shash Kwan Aya. Ya kate teen, I yet who sigu yet shall catch a nade to shut. Ya yet a cogoon, a ya. 
ya hin anach yach kawada ya Saint Peter by the sea, you ash do a sock ya chach. Atu anach kawada ya hin ak. A shock de ayahu good. A yet and a eight. A ya a shock a ya good sitting. Ya a yet a ya. You are Uwasa Eshk Eshk Yutz Ua Dusak Ya Shawat Kua Aya Tlesh Ach in Dusa Aya Ah, uh. <laughs> yeah, has to ish. Yeah, haka haka chane. akush tan tanin chat. Aya at ah, aya ye at ech. Ah. Am I a ghost? Oh, I can't do it. Twice in a row. Okay, okay. Isha, I can't do it. Isha, I can't do it. Isha, I can't do it. Sakachane, Sakachane, eat each eek a jar. Sakachane, I guess I read it twice. Yeah. It's taking all the lines, jeez. <laughs> you a young douche egg root. One and knees away at how dear. I do ish u das i awe kak on de ti we kak ach akai yan kawa ayi u das awe has do i ayana yane ya ya aguk awe we has do ish Root clay away, ya, ya do quit, quit cut away. A ya wa gift, wait do ish. A ya, a ya, who one meek. Our duck way has to ish. A Yahweh has to shoot a hat with the art. A Yah. A away, ya, ya, be a away, a ye, ye, tea, we coost in Utsin. Kristen, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Kutzin at Kustin. Yeah, Silver Bay, 
Ayak <laughs> Yadu shat a ah shuk shuk that eh aware slash aware do to a ushku ayak a day you do cooked do e kusti ye. A dark cock, the we're getting some background noise coming through, like a radio or something. I don't know if anybody has something mm -hmm. on, but maybe it can be turned off. Cheesh. Ka ya yan, which would not de at a ku a. Wa nani is the way ya if they held ya. Art away are our good way. Sax you do sago uwu. Yan asni away ya kak. Yandakini set a taik aware who at lit where yak sucks away yak out yak. Aga owe yani yani owe a cook cow dia dia ya shit a a cook cow dia ayak a day will cook with the carny handy away this way do pun as we do dark away at away ah ya cut our cut where do black I yes uh duck
or gum bonae passage yao yao what's up Ditch Ayan Nakuk. Ah, and away has to Kake Nahain. We Kustin Kutsin. Agra away Akreus. Good luck, Ayak. Was a teen e cook take? Try a suit, was a hun a cook. You yaka. Yes, Ya has ash, ya has ash, ayanatzak. ye 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 Uh, a a he nach away to gin. A poon star at on the grass way to name. Each a woo woo has our jock. Has our jack we has to honey. Ah, how we cash egg. You do a sago ah. Nas gadusha our kid dak dakhet do kakwaye. Nas Gedushu Kate Sorry. Uh, I Ya Ya Keshket eighteen. Away ya heen shark nach away ye ya guttich ya slick oo slick oo she. Away a deen a ye away to death. ye. Ach kunach yet e a hot.
Not a waste, a wajak. Sorry, did I miss a line? Like. Um, say a tohu good. A ya ya hat to to. Uh, to, uh, good away, Shkudak Nutri. Chaye Chaya Yikwat, Anni Yawa Gutas Nuts, Gutas Nuts. Chuck Ayak, Aya, uh, Aya Hut. One anis sawe at kuaha we this kush e shak nah awe awe ye yan a good chenak e de awe stin wa. So here a hunt goody away our tuck where she could our talky teen away, stoot um the hush, a yakuch. They are God's only gave it a Tell who could see are you? That are that how do a hash crassy? Ach, deny you are a yaka. Ashaa <laughs> Tachlis do ear a tonic. Awu tani awe, tle asinik. We shak, we shi awe ye kaya khat. Su cha gut a as khant awu tani awe tle asinik e, asinik e. Ek a hook ya Hanatan with ow. While Nisa wek nach a yicht has kin ah, ass, ass to woosh awa, a yicht has clean. Has to eat, has to eat a hunt away, our tan way ow.
e aus nech i in awe awa uch uch wid ina. Ach, ti kuchite. Ach, dinaye. Ach, ti jite, ach, dinaye. Awe, kayak. Kayak. Awe, at house ku ku kles haji tlek. Wa i dinai klesh haji. Ilshi ach jidiyiti i juu juu ach. Ach, <laughs> 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 The clutch awake up on who actually at Yata Naskia. Look, ye hat nasne, ye hat nasne. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See. Okay. Yeah, I can set play the kayak away. Yeah, and set and set. Okay, come do it. Let's eat. Yeah, away was he who did it? Do you do hunk? Ya esk etk, you do sagun. Anach ya go good away, but we who will who will who are the good? I got a way which they are a kind of check. Yadu kick the Ya koch de ya a kanal jeli owe chu le owe yen da da gu da da me yen da da yen da duk. Okay. Um. Aya we do hun ku hun. 
خون خوش اوه پیو آیا یاد شکوایی نزدیک شکه دخیت یا شک Yeah, has to shake. Yeah, I Yeah, I'm Yeah, Utleya, ya, ya ha danach. Utleya, ya, ut kak e awasha ya ke. A aya ya yidat ya shkayag duchus iti. Yetus tinch a decach de nukia. In a day away, yah, yah, yes, Ye aya yach shutan yach ayak do dot. Okay. Okay, we'll take a break. <laughs> take a break before we do the second part. Um, sorry about reading over people and sorry about. Uh, I was trying to like just make little changes as we went through. Like, uh, this is a draft, and there's a couple of things. Uh, it's really well done. It is really well done. There's a couple of things that I'm going to have to go through and um, fix. Some of them are little things. Like I, I like to use these guys. They have like a fancy French name. The uh, I don't know. Do these little double angle brackets or whatever. They're, I don't know what they're called. They're little chomper guys, but they work well for using quotation marks because if you had something like this, and then you did that you would have three in a row. And that looks, that's just kind of strange. And so we started using these a few years ago uh, for quotation marks on the Shinget side. There's a number of times in a story where something certainly looks like a question, and I used to write them as questions too. But when you say one anise away, um, it's not asking a question, it's saying at some point. So that's what Wananese away is a storytelling device to jump ahead in the story, right? Aqa away means and then itch away, following that. Wananese away is sort of like saying sometime later, this other thing happened. So it's how you do like sort of a time jump or a scene jump when you're telling stories in Tlingit. So here, instead of a question, at some point, Khunach a yikt haskin ah as. I would say some of them were really sitting in a tree. As to wool in the hollow of a tree. Awa a yikt haskin. It was there. They are sitting in it. So, um, 
yeah, we're kind of going through and making some adjustments as we go. But I guess before we take our break, and there's there's an awful lot here. That's a lot of lines. This is a long, long story. There's a lot of stuff going on. But anything you wanted to ask about, and we can certainly take a look at this next week as well. I know it's a it's a big thing to just jump into this giant story. This is a it's a big. But if you go, is the name of the Milky Way, and that's from this story. This is the footprints of. Kayak. He left. He ran across the top of the sky, and his footprint stayed there. I noticed a few M's. Yeah, this is Robert Zuboff. He liked to use the M quite a bit, and I don't know if that's something hmm. that old speakers in Angoon really used to do, or, or if he just loved people from Tessin and he liked to use that a lot because he he liked that Tessin connection. He talks about hmm. it a lot. But it's really interesting because old people from Angoon would usually say, we come from Tessin, that's where we come from. Then you go to Tessin, old people be like, we come from Angoon, that's where we come from. You know, and so it's a confluence of, of both, like of this ancient migration that people are talking about. I don't know if there's, because um, I heard just the first part of this story and and it's like right where I am right now. Like the rock is down there, the creek is over there. Yeah. yeah. This stuff took place here in Sitka, right? So it's really <laughs> and we're gonna get to the herring. Yeah. We're gonna get to these other parts in this story. So it's yeah, and the timely and relevant. The, yeah, the rock, the everything is like <laughs> but like where my house is, it's like where <laughs> Wow. I haven't heard much about grindstones. What would people be grinding? It's a sharpener. It's a whetstone. And so there is a, like we'll go to, let's see. Of course, there's a verb for that. Uh, so <laughs> verb dictionary and check it out. We'll go to fit. we we'll go to the underline G and zoom in a little bit. And here, so defile or sharpen with a grindstone, right? And so Pitcha is the name of a whetstone or any, some kind of, to sharpen the edge of something. And so then you've got Yaqit, which is the verb to sharpen something or to sand it with sandpaper or a sander, I guess. And so yeah, that's where you get or just on its own, which is really neat because then it shows you, you do run into some things like is a noun and is also a noun and then is the, the verb form of it. So when we come back to his story and uh, we can see, let's see, I think it was this one. Yeah, and so that would be, you could also translate that as his their whetstone or their sharpening stone. And there's quite a bit of wild stuff going on in the story too. So. And then here's like um, I would probably say whatever disagrees with him. Uh, he throws them against him. So much violence. Yeah, it's it's a yeah, it's a uh, rough story. So there's a lot of people killing kids and their parents and making out with dogs, having baby with dogs. You know, all right. Would this be re reflective of actual life or more of a storytelling thing, or all the violence and all that? Yeah, well, it's really interesting because, yeah, at this Kuik, they have asked, um, we're going to use this as a reference point to talk about um, being more proactive about violence against women. And so we're actually going to use this story as a jumping off point for some things. And, and it's not just this one. So, like, 
if you go to Raven's birth, um, there was a lady and uh, there were these kind of mythical beings way, way back. And um, one of them was named Yoqisq al And And uh, then he has a sister, Qayyik um, al is her name. And uh, she could just have a baby just by thinking about it. But whenever she had a baby, uh, he would, he and his wife, her, his brother and his wife would keep an eye on her. And if she ever had a baby, he would have it killed. And there were always male babies. And he would have his slaves kill them, or he would kill them by running them through these trials. And so she was super sad and crying. And there's two different versions. Most versions say, Shak. <laughs> Heron came up next to her. There is one version I've heard where it's a killer whale named Gush Tu Woosh. And they advise her to go find a round black stone that's really solid and to build a fire. And then when it's just cool enough where you could touch it comfortably, then you swallow it. And they say you won't taste anything, but you'll, you'll have a baby that nothing can kill. And that's where Raven was born. And then he goes and he de runs through these trials and he defeats his uncle. But his uncle tries to kill him. And so that's it's in those stories too. And so some of these stories they get they get really wild in terms of like cuz we're in these discussions now about what do we do? Do we cuz we have permission to make a, a you know a version of this that we can teach from for the children. And you know, how much do we what do we do, you know, in terms of some of the parts that are in there cuz they they're really important. So but maybe we'll skip this. You know, so this is kashantute yadakich. That does mean to pierce into a person's inside a person's head. So we always cut that line, you know, and just uh, just say, yeah, they would always. And so, you know, against his wishes is fine. But I would say dutukediyeti when when something disagrees with him. But that, it makes me think of, um, you know, Jack and the Beanstalk. You know, there's a lot of really violent European <laughs> stories where there's violence, but it's, you know, it's about right living. Yeah, like I'm going to grind your bones and make my bread. Right. Yeah, and then he murders the giant, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was pretty rough times a long time ago. <laughs> It's rough <laughs> still, you know, people still kill. Right? I haven't dug into it much, but I've heard fairy tales from Europe have been high, heavily sanitized for, you know, Disney movies and whatnot. Yeah, because stories. We talked about that because when we were trying to figure out, um, you know, uh, we were having this discussion as we were talking about these stories and how to create basically leveled readers so you could have like this story is 500 lines long or something it's, it's very long but the idea was not to change the story to say let's keep this full version but then let's make a version that's 200 lines and let's make a version that's 100 lines and let's make a version that's 30 lines and it's going to be just a real elementary version of the story but the idea is to give beginning learners something they could memorize and recite and then give children something that they could read and know. And then we, we got into these debates about should we should we have everything in there? Should we have, you know? And it was really interesting because we would sort of go back and forth. And, and that did come up with Cinderella, you know, because there's an old version of Cinderella where uh, he comes back with the glass slipper and the sisters are trying to fit their feet into it but their feet are bigger than Cinderella's. And so they cut their toes off and shave the back of their heel off and try to, and the shoe gets all bloody or something. You know, it's pretty, it's a pretty gnarly scene. But I, I don't remember that from the Disney version. Like I don't, you know, I don't think there was any toe chopping in there. So th those are things. Cause then we also go into these discussions where like, well, if we change it, we don't really have the authority to do that. Because, you know, there was another story where Raven, there's an elder who's holding on to the tide and they keep the tide high. 
and Raven was frustrated initially because he wanted to eat a bunch of sea urchins. Uh, it's called Gishtach Wugudiyeh. But then it transforms, like he has these neat transformations where he's like, well, I want that. That's frustrating. I can't get it. But then he goes, and the people want it. What about the poor people? They need to eat. Everybody needs to be eating sea urchins. And so he went to this elder that's, that was sleeping, and that was the elder that held on to the time. And it's a really interesting story because she's the one, I think, who names him because he didn't have a name at that point, according to Frank Italia. And then uh, she called him uh, which means uh, doo doo but raven, to say it nicely. And, um, and so he stood in, in between her and the fire. And it's pretty cool because there's a verb. He said, uh, So achtenis would mean I'm eating sea urchins raw, right out of the shell. It means to eat them right out of the shell. And he said, it's the salt water from eating those that has made me cold. And so this elder was sleeping with a board out her back and then the fire. And she, would, that she really liked to stay warm. And so he stood between her and the fire and she got really mad. And so he picked her up and flipped her upside down and was spanking her butt with an empty sea urchin shell until she let go of the tie. And then, um, so she's saying, knock it off, knock it off. And so he sends his cousin down. And he's like, well, how, how low did the tide go? And he goes, it went down half a man. He's like, all right, well, let me keep hitting her on the butt. And so he does. And then she finally lets go of the tide. And now the tide can go in and out. But, you know, there's, there's some violence in that story too. And then, um, but then someone changed the story to say like, Oh, he tickled her. He tickled her until she let go. But then some parents were like, ooh, that's actually kind of, I don't like that. Go back to swatting him on the butt. You know, I don't want anybody tickling my kid. You know? And so, but these are interesting questions that we run into because a lot of our stories have a lot of, you know, there's just a lot of wild stuff in some of them, including people marrying animals and other stuff. But there's this interesting, you know, there's a cross that goes on here that, is a spiritual thing so it's not like bestiality it's it's like they cross over into this realm where those animals look like people and they take their skin off and then it's some supernatural interaction with where you're getting so close to the natural world that you cross over into this other realm and you often go into their houses and you see them as people and so is when my kids were little and we went to the um, visitor center and they um, and Nancy Douglas told that story with the sea urchin shell and the tide woman and the kids didn't have any trouble with that. <laughs> Some of the parents were like, <laughs> but I think kids understand, you know, what's a story, you know, and, and, and the other thing I was going to say is Shakespeare, like Shakespeare's plays are extremely violent but you know you do that you know like high school maybe yeah right yeah okay he cooks her kids into a pie and feeds them to her okay <laughs> that's a nursery rhyme <laughs> uh, okay uh, any other thoughts or questions on anything that you saw and we'll take a closer look through this too because it's it's, and so, yeah, one anisa way at Kaudiya. I would say at some point something happened. And that's a statement, right? There's this thing, you'll learn this other thing too. Um, this would be after he paddled ashore. There, there's some pretty advanced, like this is a really advanced Tlingit language speaker. So there's always, there's lots of stuff to go through and see, but these are just little little adjustments that are made as we go through and start preparing this because they want to bring the story out on Saturday for at the Yao Pu'i. And so we're just tuning it up. And this is told by Shah Da Robert Zuboff, who was an just an absolute master storyteller. Just knew so many stories. Okay, well, uh, we should take five and then come back and then we'll uh, read Act Two, see what happens next. Sheesh.
Yeah, yeah, she's sad here. Oh, what's that? Sorry. I was just going to ask if we were going to add George to the rotation. Oh, okay. Yes, going to cheese. Uh... Sure. Yes. So let's let me make a new reading list. Okay. Let's take it from the top. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like a day, I use our own a chic ak. Yak, ayak, yak, ayak, do shot, do shot. I ya 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 kun storage tikatin ya te George. Aya Aya ya ya is shut ayah shut ayah you award daya khanuj we ya a kah away we ya to play ya ya atani akh ke sahin je away Dr. Askeach we yao. Ah, aye du jin ten kayas shat. Dr. Askeach. Owe, nest wo goody, owe, ah, goos. Uh, yes, kayak do shot. Oh, whoops, did I even do it? No, okay. Oops. Okay. At the tea, I uh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. The car test could be seen. A ya, ya, shakai, you shot a ya at a ya, a cake, a gene, I do chant a ya unwoosh dasway icha. Test 
Aya tsu kin pina a aya tsu ach ache was wawus da sowe icha. Hande jin, hande. Hande ijin. Ijin tayik kwa u ya khakha at. Wait. Ya okay she ya. Ya what ayi. Yao Tiesi Uchan Jintakaya Yana was shot. Way of Kayak Yak Yao Dikaisi. Kaihi ye ucha kaihi yach wune. Ina a ya ya du chuch ya du yit and chuch awe ya du yit wak wak shi yit awe ye osine. A shut aya yao tlesi ah jinta yon ow shut aya ow de hech at ah we eek we yao te ye cuts. Doctor ash eat we yao. Doctor ash eat. Kana yande ya kukana shkit. Awe shadaha awe ya yawaka. Weka akhti itan. Pat, pat akhti itan. Where do chan are they? We can't hard ye tan tuck if I a cup. Are they way they cut way they cut? A chiach do echi yanastin. Kana yande ya kukagashi. Kuka gashkit awe ada yukat yuk ayatank wekat. Kwana ni sawet a agit awdawa ak ay yu yawaka. Hi. Okay. 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 Okay.
schon das, ach. Ach. Okay, die away, ja, na gut. Hi, ja, schau, und away. Ach, away, zu, 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 I uh, to shut away this uh, city. Yeah, at okay, do a sock this shaw. Yeah, she Okay. Yeah, well, you two at lock with a sneak. And so the cycle continues. It goes into Akhtatsin after that. And then it goes into um, Ka Ka. And then it goes into, I think this is probably the last one, which should be Ka Kachguk, I think. This one's long. Um, scroll, scroll, scroll. And then I think this is the last. And so this is, they often call this like the kicks at the cycle. And so there are some stories that you would call like, well, I know they call them yesh, yesh, uh, klaku. And so that's when you're going to tell the raven stories all in a row and they usually go in a certain order it's like this one then that one then this one and even like this one they're not necessarily connected but they are connected by time and in sort of a sequence type of a thing so a kak achguk is where he's hunting fur seals with his nephews and they get blown way out to sea well like some strange things were happening before like he was going out um if you go up and around and start you go out past glacier bay you got to go up past glacier bay towards the open waters to hunt fur seals and when you hunt fur seals you got a long time ago they would hunt them differently because you go for a fur seal you can throw up what they call on um, it's a spear where the tip comes off and then there's a long uh zas a long line and it spins itself when it gets speared and then it ties itself up and it's ready to sort of be pulled in but a fur seal is different and bigger so what they would do is wait till the waves were pretty rough and then they would go chase them and then they would make the seal jump into the waves and it would wear itself out and so you want it to really get worn out before you'd go get it but he went out to this place where he would usually hunt them and he could hear them speaking Klingit and it's a quiet, quiet, Kachukuk is coming. And he was missing with his spears. And so he went back to make new ones. And then when he went out, this huge storm pushed him out and they ended up in probably Hawaii. So a really neat story. Kaka is, uh, I think, is taken by a um, Kushta. And then you have Akhtatsin, which is the salmon boy story. So these are all part of a cycle. And Kayak was... Uh, I think the first one that that's usually told in this cycle. Okay, thoughts, questions. So that was a big story. It was a big chunks of you know, but it's fun. I think it's fun to do this stuff because you get you do the grammar stuff and you start to get scrambled. It, but it's good because it's like it's nesting in your brain. But then I think it's good to just take big chunks of language, not not think about it, just let it go by. But then if you come back in and look through this thing. You'll see all kinds of stuff. And I'll just keep making little edits here and there. But this is this is. Literature. Oh, go ahead. Oh, it, it just it seems like epic literature of sorts to me. I don't know. I mean, yeah. Um, I found myself trying to comprehend as we went, but it became a lot to keep up with, and I just focused on reading <laughs> instead. Right. So I, 
be fun to go back and actually read it and see what's happening. And I, I don't know, I feel like this could be a text to cover over a semester or something. <laughs> There's a yeah. lot here. Yeah, I mean, it's huge. And then like, Robert Zuboff has this whole, he's told, he told so many stories. There's so many recordings of him. Um, so yeah, I mean, lots of fun stuff. So sheet, kanach, shkashnika, yeah. So um, this is a place name, right? And so uh, it it might even go like that once we listen to it on the recording, but maybe not. Um, and so, and then there, there's just some really yach ya ku yan so this is a like it's in the process of happening and like if we look just look up like even just say oh here's the kind of first verb that we run into right yeah there's no verb there right and as the the stage that you're at you got to look at these verbless sentences because those are their beauties because like, i don't have to conjugate anything i don't have to change any verbs at all and i could just say something Right, and that's really cool because then you say it's this, it's that, it's that type of thing. Um, but then we get yach ya kuyan tushakat, and so now we get this. So then we're like, oh well, we had an easy sentence. Now we get what one that just bonks us right over the head with co its complexity. So we'll just go into the verb dictionary and look up got, and we're gonna look for something that might have k on it, and then ya on it and then an L classifier. So this these are part of the conjugation. So ya and the N are linked together to say in the process of happening. And then the T is us. We're the ones who are doing it. So let's go just see what we could find. Good evening. Oh. Um, a question about, uh, is it safe to assume all nouns come from verbs? Because isn't neek a verb? And shkashnik? Yeah, so this this does this is a verbal noun, but I wouldn't say all nouns come from verbs. No, so like you have um, one of the theories is that there's a whole bunch of the the OG nouns, the original nouns, which are very short, and they can't be trans like geish, chak, pooch, keet. Those those are not other little things that are smushed together that come from anything else. It's like that's what that thing is called. But then like a woodpecker shows up and like, what the heck is that? What are we going to call that thing? We got all, all these things had these names from the ancient people. They said, I don't know, what's it do? Well, it's kind of the duke, ganda. Oh, ganda da gugu. So it means pecks around the wood. So that has a verbal noun, which means it comes from a verb. But others are compounds. Um, so there's a little bird uh, called a, a dipper or an oozel. I think it's the same thing. When you see it, it lands in the, in the likes to land in the river. And then it does this cool little bob thing. Like, you know, it goes bob, bob, bob. And it's called hinyak And that's, you know, dancing in the water, in the shallow water. That's a cool name. Uh, so some of them do, but not all of them do. But there are ways to turn things into, and I, I haven't figured out what the patterns are. There's a few different patterns for turning verbs into nouns. Let's go look up. Qad. But there's no case where a noun would turn into a verb. Some languages work more that way, I guess. I've heard that anyway. But it's interesting. Click it is just so verb saturated. Yeah, some Continue. of them have really interesting relationships like sa t s a a um hold on let me just make a little let's make some notes here so here's here's some examples of um nouns that are also verb roots okay so here's uh let me just change this okay so what is this That's what we call it. Anybody know what saw Seal, right? Seal. It's a hair seal or a harbor seal. So what? This is a third-person verb. 
If we know what it is. What do you think someone did if they sealed? What could a person do that resembles what a seal does? A person. I can... It was an envelope. Bobby? Bobbed? That's a good guess. It has to do with noise, though. How's that? Barked? Maybe? Belch. Right? Buh. Right. So there's, there's one where, like, um, there's a cool relationship, right? So that one's obvious. I think saw and then, but I don't know. Were people burping before they saw seals? Maybe not. I don't know. There's a lot to unwrap there. So here's another one. So this one's more complicated. That's what they call Raven, right? So then this is, uh, that's a verb. They. This one's a little more complicated. Any guesses? Or did, did I tell you this one yet? Do you lied. Know? Is it a lion? Well, that would be this one. And then you can also do this one. So Raven's a complicated, complicated thing. So this one is, uh, that's what I think that one is. They pretended to know what they were doing. It's out So that's what it truly means to Raven is to like, like, Teach people sing it? Yeah, I could, I could teach people sing it. Yeah, yeah, I'll get, I'll get right on that. I'll get right, you know. But, you know, it's to, to act like you know what you're doing, but you don't know what you're doing. And then, is to lie. There is a complicated construction here, and I think the literal interpretation of this is they pretended to raven. Whatever that means. But that means lying. And then put out the yes would be they cheated them or tricked them. So there's one where you certainly have, um, you know, there's a relationship there. And, you know, we saw that one too, where some of these, it's not clear which one came first, right? Was there was a grindstone, you know, and so there was some sort of whetstone or something, and then People's like, hey, I bet you could sharpen a knife on that, right? Like, who knows which one came first? But yeah, this relationship between uh, verbs and nouns is really interesting because then sometimes it can go, you know, you got some of them, like there's a verb, there's a noun. And this is one where it's like it has two different versions. And the second version it's what it does is it says you can't you can't do the verb that way. It doesn't make sense to do the verb this way. So that's why we know it's a noun. And here's another one. So here's here's the verb. Here's the noun. So this one is they are what? Strong. Strong. And so what's the noun version of that? Strength. Unique. Sick. So what's neek? What's the noun version of that one?
right? And so some of these, there's really interesting relationships. Um, uh, what about this one? Oops. And we know but we'll put a pronoun on it. Do tla. Because you have this. Anybody know what this is? Masus tla to khani. Is that milk? Mm hmm And so this is cow. This is really interesting because that's like inside love or proximity. But where does it come from? Not necessarily from the cow, right? This is the body part. Mammary gland. Mammary gland. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a breast, right? And then this is, they suckled it. Right, and so here is another, like, a very close noun-verb relationship. And, we, you know, and as people learn Tlingit, there's all kinds of interesting things that happens. And so, like, um, we we had a friend. We have a friend who was breastfeeding, and then one of another friend was talking about their baby, and I said, "Oh, wasus atachaniki etuiti." I said, "Ketch wasus away to tlafa," and so that's where you just say atachani. So, this is specifically cow milk, right? And so. You wouldn't ask if a baby is breastfeeding. You wouldn't talk about cow milk. You'd just have atachani, which would be milk, right? Like from what the babies drink. So, okay. Uh, I've heard Dutch Jenny call it wink. Yes. Is that a, is that different? Uh, it's just it comes from. It's just a Shingish word. That's all. So the M switches okay. to a W, and then the L switches to an N. And that's how you make something into Klingish. And so wink is very common, because some people don't like to say wasus atachani, because that makes them think about a utter, I guess. I don't know. You know, because it, maybe it's a little too too literal. Um, but that's the name for it. And then is, uh would be like breast milk, you know, and so... Yeah, but wink is certainly another word. And we talked about this. We talked about this too. Some things just have, they don't have great names. I didn't name them. Um, here's an example. Anybody know what that is? It's actually two different things. Right. Yeah, it's runny snot, or it's a turkey. So these are the case. That's a case where like may want to rename that turkey. I don't know. Um, this is a this I think is a verbal noun. Anybody know what this? Gandats aji. What's that one?
Oops. And it's RG Hartley. What's that? Is that the honey? Mm hmm. And that is literally uh, bee poop. Bee poop? Mm -hmm. And so, like, you're raising your kids in Tlingit, you have to put some honey in your tea. And they say, What's that? And then the kid goes, Plague. So, but then you know, a friend of mine was saying, like, well, it's not literally their poop. They vomit it up. It should be gun to taji hotsi. Like, All right, I don't know. Take it up with the committee. But you know, those are some things. You know, it's just interesting the things that we, the names that the ancestors have come up with. And sometimes we got to look at that and we got to say maybe we got to adjust these things, but maybe not. Some of them are pretty fun. Um, but then some people have said, well, if you're calling a turkey thaqaiq, are you respecting it as a food? It's like, okay, I don't, I don't know. Then we get, well, what do the people call it where it's like kind of native to where they are? So we have no turkeys here. Because someone suggested calling it nukti tlain, which would be a big uh, hooter grouse, you know. Um, but I don't know. Think about it over the weekend. Uh, so I'll put this story up so y'all can study it. I'd recommend taking a look at it again. Uh, circle things that you want to talk about that you that you think are interesting. Um, and I don't know about the hot milk that melts your that scalds your hands. That's that's, uh, that's pretty wild. That's a pretty wild part of the story. And so um, I was wondering about that. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe it gets acid if it. <laughs> so those are those are Kixetti stories. Yeah, those are Kixetti stories, and so it's all or, part of the cycle. But other, but other people can tell them, or is it just should you just be Kixetti to? That's a really good question. I mean, Shah Dog was Kakwedi, and he told them, mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. some people get really upset about it these days, and I do understand, like. If someone's paying you to be a storyteller, I don't know if you should tell this story in public, but I think mm. if you know it, then people would ask you. Like I'm, you know, they want it. They want to bring the story out on Saturday, and that's the kick sadi, but they're asking mm. other people to help with it. And if mm. if he hadn't told it, we might not know it the same way that we're, we're able to now. And so for me, I I don't. I don't get that closely attached to like you can't tell it to people but it's more like you can't wear the images that come from it and you just you gotta check mm. with, if you're gonna mm. tell it publicly check it but then we bring it into mm. a class like this which you know some people might get upset about but for me i think well we can learn the, these were just to everybody knew them if you went back a long time ago mm. everybody knew these stories and now very few people do mm. so i also think they said so we gotta do that too and so um but there are sometimes heated debates about whether we should even be putting this stuff out there in public but at the same time i think it's a it's crisis mode for our language and culture so for me i think it's it's good to yeah. study these things and it's good to look at the finer points and it's good to you know we honor the people we say this is their story and mm -hmm. we recognize that uh, but it, yeah. they're amazing stories and they're fun to study. So the the Deshitan are also connected to the Tangka story and so are the Daklawedi. And so it's good to, mm -hmm. I think it's good to tell the stories and to study them and to make those direct ties because then that helps us to see those things better. Yeah. No, and where being in Sitka, I've, you know, heard people tell those stories who, you know, who are all different clans and it's, I mean, I don't, I don't, as far as I know, there isn't, you know, any issues. I was just wondering about that. Yeah. Yeah. And, but if you look at like how complex the language tends to get in stories in general, I bet you if you go back a long time ago, like one out of every hundred people could do that kind of stuff. So it was mm -hmm. all about the storyteller and not necessarily mm -hmm. about which clan they belong to, mm -hmm. but you know, who knows too. I'm sure that it was complex, but mm -hmm. also not so rigid that you couldn't tell it. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. We're going to cheat, Johan. Thanks for uh, <laughs> all your patience. And stuff. It, was, it was a scramble to get over here. Just I just beat the ashes from the Russian volcano. Yatukha, it's a blinking mountain. That's how you say volcano. And now the ash is going to come over us. Like I guess that's what's going to happen. So we uh, we barely made it into Sitka. First flight was canceled. Second flight, they said, um, yeah, we'll go at three o'clock. So then we showed up to check in. I'm like, where are you going? Is it sick? And they go, mm. it's like, hey, don't make that face. But it, mm. it worked. So we'll have a little immersion tomorrow. And I, you folks will be able to see some of the footage from it at a later time. So it's being recorded by Gold Belt Heritage Foundation. So it's a lot of exciting things going on over here. And a lot of conversations about protecting the earth, protecting the things that we have lived off of for a long time and protecting women and just being being stronger people somehow. So good conversations. Okay, I'll put the story up on our page tonight and um, we'll see you folks on Tuesday.